guys and welcome to Bomb Anime. It's your girl, Rika. And Big Boy Sam here bringing you another episode of Noblesse The Awakening. Shout out to Ketero Ken who gave us a heads up on the prequel. So you know what it is, let's get right into it. I liked this episode way better than I actually liked the first episode of Nobilies. This episode gave me the same kind of vibes that the first five minutes of Nobilies gave me. Yeah, it gave me some context, it gave me an actual proper path, it showed me a story. I was so invested in this and I was like, oh my god, this is epic. I can't wait to see episode two, but there isn't one. <laughs> It also made me feel like I was right because I was saying that the issues that I felt in that first episode, I felt like it might be just an episode one problem and we'll get more. And The Awakening has basically shown me what I can look forward to. I've seen a little bit of people fighting. It's quite cool. Also, we found out why Shin Wu got wounded. It still doesn't explain how he could use that arm in a fight after getting it stomped on and broken. By a supernatural beast. Like, it makes no sense. But I'm kind of looking forward to the answer. Let's be honest, Noble East is the sequel to Noble East The Awakening, right? So they're probably going to slow burn it out, kind of flesh it out a bit. And we were given the little bit of scrap for the first five minutes and then, you know, we got the charred bit of meat <laughs> to eat for the rest of that episode but this episode was that morsel the whole way through i really like the way the awakening played with dark and light the night time was so dark everything was dark the lighting was dark there was loads of shadow and then you also had these vampires gods nobles whatever you want to call them we had them primarily in the evening and then the daytime was really really bright the lighting was extremely white almost like a hospital yeah i get what you mean yeah everything is light colored and i just like the way they played around with the light and the dark and the themes are interwoven with that appreciate it i want to talk about master <laughs> Or oh, right, as some people call it. But I'm, if you want to build the kind of hype for a character, this is how you go about it. My man did not speak much. <laughs> he did not do much. He walked around with the regality of royalty, bro. Neil. Oh, 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 <laughs> that hit me the right way when he said Neil. And then when the guy transformed and he said it again, oh my God, it was that. Your perfection, bro. I was like, oh, no way! Bro, if you want to write a character that is mysterious as well as hitting every single expectation that you had and more, this is how you do it. Ryzel was the best written character there. Well done, guys. Like, Noblesse, Awakening, amazing. Yeah, they really, really did it very well. I enjoyed a lot of it. And we got to see a little bit more of these failed experiments. I still want to know what makes them failed. Are they failed experiments because they're not strong enough? They don't have as many powers? Or are they weak because they have too much humanity? We've noticed that the people that work for the organization are extremely ruthless. They don't seem to have much feelings about anything. And even on the flip side of that, where you've got Rizal and um, Frankenstein, they clearly have emotions, but they're more subdued than you would see in a person. So, but when we saw M21 and M24, they're very emotional, very much like human beings. They have the powers, but they're obviously not as strong. And I'm wondering if it's the fact that they've retained so much of their human sides that makes them overall weak and failed. See, I disagree with you slightly on that one. Like, yeah, Rizo and Frankenstein are above it all. Like, for me, all I saw was indifference. They didn't care which way or what happened to humans, but they did like them as as if you like your dog or a pet or something, you know? But with the, the non-failed experiments, the experiments that were successes, they were too invested in specific emotions. So Jake, he was too much a psychopath, where it was just all his desires to destroy and whatever. And the other girl was too much of a, a pompous, prissy little 
a pompous person. And Why was she pretty? Well, in the beginning when she was talking down to everyone the whole time, not even Jake talked down to them that much. She was just like, you lot are beneath us, you're nothing to us, I don't care about you, keep yourself in line or else you're going to die, basically. So with that, I was like, maybe that is the issue. They're successful because they're too much of an emotion. Whereas, as you said, the failed experiments are more well-rounded human-ish sort of hybrids. And the nobles and the noblesses are just indifferent and see humanity and everyone else, including the successful experiments as little dogs who need to know before them. Totally disagree with you there. I know. Completely, completely. I do not think that um, Frankenstein and Rizal were indifferent. They seem to actually have a soft spot for humanity. Also, in the beginning, we also got the backstory that um, the nobles or the gods, however they were worshipped or however they, whatever they were called, protected humanity. And then there was the noblesse who protected them. So that doesn't tell me that about any kind of indifference to humanity because they're protectors. So I think that they do care about humanity and clearly they care about the failed experiments too because they took in M21. Yeah. So they do care. They do have emotions. They're just very, they just seem subdued and a bit aloof. But I wouldn't say they were indifferent. Yeah, they do look at the um, the successful experiments as nothing. But I think that's more because, first of all, they don't know their place. And also, um, the noblesse is obviously against the organisation. They wanted his coffin for a reason. What do they want to use it for? Obviously, it's something to do with harnessing his powers. Maybe it's them getting to the next step. Maybe they want to be him. They want to be the the top of the food chain. Um, Frankenstein says something really important. He goes, ah, I can see this is all from me. Yes. And he was like, I'm not saying anything else. So did the organization harness Frankenstein's power and then create the experiments from him? Yeah. And like, he's the second in command sort of thing. Yeah. And so next thing is, my man Big Novel leaves Rizal. He needs to get him, they need to get him so that they get the top dog rather than the the slave. <laughs> I got that exact same feeling that they've obviously used his, I think it's his blood. Yeah. While Frankenstein was asleep and they tried to do it with, they tried to do the same thing with Rizal but the, they couldn't open the coffin first of all and obviously the organisation didn't actually get him in their hands. So they couldn't do whatever they wanted to do. And unfortunately he woke up, so, you know. I don't think they would have been able to do that to Frankenstein had he not been asleep. And it is also possible that we're dealing with humans that have gotten their hands on it because first of all, humans knew about them, although they were in the shadows. I feel like no humans knowing about it was pretty impossible over, over the years. It's impossible to not get found out by at least one or two people. And they found a way to harness the power because, come on, human beings are extremely ambitious. We always want to get to the next stage, to the next step. So it makes sense that they would want to be gods. I agree with that totally. I mean, if I was a god right now, my life would be totally different. Um, I wanted to talk about M24 and the sacrifice he made and how I kind of don't respect it. You too? Okay, why don't you respect it? Okay, so he did something that he knew was going to get him killed. You can't, he knew what that guy, how powerful that guy was. He's a failed experiment. He did something crazy. He did not give his friend a heads up. He knew that his friend would be in danger as well. And he, he did it anyway broke his earpiece and didn't give a thought to his friend to save these human beings that he doesn't know. I did not respect that he couldn't spare a thought for his friend that would have died. As far as he's concerned, he didn't know two people were going to swoop in. Okay, I agree with you because you're absolutely correct. He's a waste man. But my reason for why I don't respect it was at the time where you were angry 
when Jake killed one of your boys in the facility, you did nothing then. You watched him slaughter many of your boy them. You watched him slaughter many of the man them. Loads of people were dead and you did nothing but stay still and do as you told. Then you come out and then out of nowhere you're like, yeah, well, you know, sod it now. It, it didn't ring true to me. It didn't, it didn't feel like correct to the character I was given. But maybe sometimes you need to just stretch a little bit of imagination to move the forward to move the story forward and I think that was what happened there. Again, I'm gonna disagree with you. Of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like it did ring true. Um when you're in certain situations, it can be hard to move. Sometimes the body freezes up and also Sometimes revisiting a traumatic thing pushes you to act. Because then you can just say that to anyone. Why didn't you do something? Why didn't you do, like, why did you just stand there? People freeze up. You'll see it if people see a weapon. A lot of people freeze and fixate on the weapon. It's a natural physical response in the body. So I, I would, I'm giving him a pass for that. It is human nature and Clearly at that point, it, he tr he got triggered because you saw him have the flashback. So he probably actually has some form of PTSD and snapped, which also kind of contradicts what I said earlier on. Yeah, how are you going to flip flop, fam? No, shush! <laughs> <laughs> what are you, a pancake? <laughs> what are you, a pancake flip flopping? <laughs> Look, I'm just saying. Let's move on. You flip flop like this, my rice. Let's move on. <laughs> Big boy Sam is clearly hungry because I made a lot of food jokes today, bro. Also, one one other question that I did have is, why are the failed experiments treated as if it's their fault for being failed? Wouldn't it be the scientist in question that couldn't get their ish together? It kind of goes back to what you said earlier, though, isn't it? We don't know what the experiments are, what's going on, what makes them a failed experiment. We don't know. Well, come on. They're basically vampires. I think we can take an educated guess that it's got something to do with the blood. What, so you're saying that they're all, all negative rather than the <laughs> like, you know no, what I mean? <laughs> no, there's obviously got to be something more to it. But I think the key is the blood because the they're vampires. Yeah, obviously. I mean, like, let's let's not joke about it anymore. They are definitely vampires. There's no no two ways about it. In the episode, no release that the episode that we watched earlier, you could have said maybe. Now nah, we maybe. knew even then. Well, we kind of already knew that. Like, but this episode clearly said, "Yo, guys, we're vampires, man." Yeah. <laughs> Don't like in the first ten minutes, I'm getting a guy getting his neck bitten into. You get know what I mean? <laughs> If this had been our hot or not, it would have been a hot for me. And it would have... Oh wait, I already said hot, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> you did, just barely. But this would have been a five hot, maybe. Maybe a four. I don't yeah, know. for sure. It's, it's It was a very, very good episode. It was strong. And at only 30 minutes, it's surprising that they got all of that done. Whereas Nobly's was just dragging to its conclusion. That's what it felt like. So I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a little check to see who directed both and see if there's any differences in the people or the team that was involved with these two episodes because it does feel very different. Yeah, Ruka, get on that phone and let me know in it. I will. I'm obviously not gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us for this episode. Yeah, please like, share, and subscribe. Peace.